So this here is my $700 PC build for the month of October 2022, and this is going to be excellent for not just 1080p gaming, but even a little bit of casual 1440p gaming. And like with all my budget builds, this is going to extract a lot of value for your buck while not breaking the bank and still looking good at the same time. So in today's build guide, I'm gonna be showing you how to put together this computer, the parts list going inside of it, then how to set up the computer for Windows and GPU drivers, then getting into the benchmark section where you can see the performance of this computer on your favorite games, and then closing out with my final thoughts on this $700 computer. And I wanna reemphasize that all the parts going into this PC can be found in the description below, but if you want the best prices for the computer parts in this build, you're gonna to wanna to shop at Micro Center. All right, so to build this computer, you're gonna need a pair of scissors. You're going to need a Phillips head one screwdriver for your M.2 SSD, so one of these smaller guys, a Phillips head screwdriver, and then an eight gigabyte or bigger flash drive for your Windows bootable media device you'll install Windows onto this computer with. For the moment, we'll set that aside. So go ahead and unbox your processor, unbox your CPU cooler that comes with the processor, take out your RAM, and then have your M.2 SSD, or AKA your storage, on hand and ready to go. And then now onto the motherboard. So let's go ahead and unbox this. This is an IO shield. You will need this. Go ahead and take that out. This is a miniature motherboard manual. You will need this. This will tell you where certain things will go. And it includes a QR code to the full manual. This is a SATA cable. You don't need one of these. And then here is the motherboard in all of its glory. But first, let me tell you about the parts going into this computer, starting with our CPU and motherboard, that being the Ryzen 5 4500 and the Gigabyte B450DS3HM. So the reason why I'm going with a fourth gen Ryzen processor in this build, albeit being a little bit of a weird choice, is because we can pair it with cheaper B450 motherboards right out of the box without a BIOS update. So going with a B450 motherboard, say over a B550 motherboard is gonna save us a good 40 to $30, which can let us spend more money on the rest of the build. And in fact, this open box deal that I got from Micro Center was actually $43. A very, very cheap motherboard for this build that I'll still yield the quality that we want. So go ahead and take your six core 12 threaded CPU, unbox it, locate where the triangle is on the processor and use that triangle to line it up with the triangle found on the CPU socket. This will let you know the right way to put it in. So go ahead and open up this latch, line up the triangle on the socket to the triangle of the CPU, drop it in and then press down this latch. This is what your CPU should look like when you have it placed in correctly on the motherboard. All right, then for our memory and storage, we're going with a two by eight gigabyte G-Skill Rip Jaws kit of RAM, running at 3200 megahertz, cast latency of 16, DDR4, all standard stuff, but great, excellent value memory for the price. And then for our storage, we're going with a 500 gigabyte Samsung 980 M.2 SSD. And online, you can get this for above $60 or so, but in Micro Center, you can get this in store for 50 bucks, which is an absolute steal. This is one of the highest quality M.2 SSDs you can get in this kind of prosumer range, and you can get it for 50 bucks. So this is an easy choice for this build. All right, let's go ahead and install the RAM. So go ahead and open up these two slashes, also known as DDR2 and DDR1 on the motherboard. Universally, these will always be in the same two slots no matter what. And these will only go in one way. Make sure it clicks in. And for this next one, make sure it clicks in as well. And then for our storage, AKA our M.2 SSD, we're gonna go ahead and unscrew this little screw right here found on the motherboard. Have that on hand, then take this, put it in here, put that down and screw this in. There we go. This is what you need your smaller Phillips head one screwdriver for. And then for our CPU cooler, we're gonna use the stock one that comes with the 4500. An important thing to note, there's already thermal paste on the CPU cooler, so no need to provide your own. All right, so to install this, go ahead and line up the CPU cooler with the four holes here on the motherboard. Then go ahead and screw this in. Kind of do one screw on each side 
halfway. Don't screw it in all the way. See if you can get it in the thread first. All right, that's in. Let's go ahead and screw in the rest of these. Don't forget to plug in your CPU fan cable into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. That way your motherboard knows power on your CPU cooler. And this will go in like that. There you go. Okay, so before we put in the motherboard and the power supply and the graphics card into the PC case, first I want you to open it up because there's a few things we gotta identify. By the way, this Leon Lee case has some very pretty looking metal screws. Okay, so in the case, you're gonna find a manual and this case manual is gonna tell you where to put what inside the PC case and what screws to use. And then here, here is a plastic baggie full of all the screws and accessories and even some zip ties we'll need to complete the computer. And then if we open up the rear of the PC case, you will find these guys. These are our front headers for our PC case. So like your power button, reset button, USBs, audio jack, and so on and so forth. So we'll be plugging this into the motherboard eventually. First though, before you get too excited, make sure to plug in your IO shield into the PC case. So with this, there's this side that is kind of protruded. And then there's this side with that it's recessed and has these sticky bits. You're gonna to wanna to flip this around and have the protruding sign going outwards. So it digs into the PC case and the sticky bits facing inwards. You'll know if you have it the right way or not. It's pretty easy. There you go. All right, so before you put the motherboard into the PC case, let's make sure all of the standoffs holes here on the motherboard are covered off with the standoffs found in the PC case. So here on the motherboard, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes. And here on the case, there are one, two, three, four, five, six standoffs. So if you look here on the motherboard and the PC case, this hole right here on the far left of the motherboard or far right on the motherboard actually doesn't have a hole here in the PC case. So this is going to be one standoff that isn't going to be covered by the PC case but the rest should. So the only standoff we're gonna have to move in this PC case to cover off the available holes on the motherboard is this one here from this spot down to here. And with that, we are now all good to place in the motherboard. Go ahead and make sure that the holes on the motherboard line up with the standoffs in the PC case. And then we're gonna wanna use these screws you see here on screen to screw in the motherboard into the PC case. Okay, we have all six screws in, but we haven't screwed them in completely. So now we're gonna go ahead and tighten in one end of the motherboard and then go across to the other side and tighten in this screw all the way. And I like doing this so that way we put equal pressure on all sides of the motherboard when it's fully inside the PC case. That way we don't risk the issue of possibly bending the motherboard when we throw in our graphics card. All right. That is in. Okay, so this is where you should end the bet right now with the build and next we're gonna put in the power supply, then hook up all the cables and then get to the graphics card. But first, let me give a quick feature on the case here. Now, you can use any micro ATX case with this build. It can be the one we use from the $500 build guide, or it can be the one we're using for our upcoming $600 build guide. As long as it's a micro ATX case, it's gonna work in this build. However, I wanna highlight the Lee and Lee 205M we're using in this build because you can't find this case online. I mean, you could, but you could only find it in black and it'll cost you $100. But in store at Micro Center, you can pick up this very underrated budget PC case for 70 bucks. It's a really awesome deal. But anyways, let's go ahead and get to installing our power supply, which for this build guide, we've chosen the Thermaltake Smart BX1 550 80 plus bronze power supply. So again, you can pick this up from Micro Center for a really good price or online. And for this build, you're looking at, at tops probably 500 watts of usage. So a 550 watt power supply is gonna be more than plenty. But remember, if you do wanna say, maybe look into upgrading to a better graphics card later down the road, like a higher rent RTX or RX card, you might wanna look into getting a 700 or 800 watt power supply. But for the moment, this will do. Here in this baggie are four screws that we're gonna use to help screw in the power supply into the PC case. So let me go ahead and grab those. Oh yeah, and just like the PC case, you don't have to get this exact power supply here in order to make this build work. You can use the power supply we use from our $500 build guide, or you can use the one for our upcoming $600 build guide. Really any ATX power supply you choose is gonna be fine as long as it doesn't look like it'll explode on you. So to install this power supply into the PC case, make sure it is the fan side facing down. Make sure this switch is on the O and not the line. Thread it in here, line it up. 
We'll go ahead and take the screws we found from the power supply box and screw these in one by one. And with all of these cables here, we're gonna go ahead and start plugging everything into the PC case. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in the first of our front panel connectors, starting with the USB 3.0 connector, this blue guy right here. And this is only gonna go in one way, right here where it says USB 3.0, like that. Next, let's plug in the HD audio connector right on the bottom left of the motherboard where it says HD audio. This will also only go in one way. There you go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plug in the front I.O. headers for our power button, reset button, and other LEDs. And this is only gonna go in in a certain configuration, which you could find in the motherboard manual. You just got to take your time and plug in each of these small connectors correctly, but you will get it. You just have to follow it. It's gonna be like Legos. Now let's go ahead and take care of our two power connectors that are to go into the motherboard, starting with our motherboard power connector. This will only go in one way. There's this latch you see here on the connector and a little ledge here on the actual connection. And we're gonna line the two up, bring it around, and plug that in. Then let's go ahead and plug in our CPU power connector, which says CPU on the actual power connector. Pretty straightforward. And this will also only go in one way. There's gonna be a notch on the connector and a latch on the actual connection. And there you go. Then the last power connector you just need to have on hand is this PCI power connector here coming from this hole from the bottom of the PC case. Just have this on hand because now we're gonna install the graphics card next. Okay, let's install the graphics card, which for this build guide, I've chosen the Radeon RX 6600. This is by far the best graphics card you can buy brand new in terms of value in 2022. This is undisputed. It just provides too much power for the money, which for this is about $250. And all things considered, way better value than the RTX 3050. And even compared to the used market, it's a pretty good buy. So this is gonna be the actual workhorse behind the build that's gonna let us play at 1080p 144 frames per second, or even a little bit of 1440p gaming, depending on the game. And even though this is a Radeon graphics card, you can perform hardware streaming with it with the AVC encoder. Albeit it's not as clean as the NVEC encoder from Nvidia, but the results are still pretty acceptable nonetheless, especially given how much value you're getting out of the card. Oh yeah, and I picked this one up from Micro Center as well for a good price. And one more thing, remember that this build here uses a motherboard that doesn't have a built-in Wi-Fi card. So unless you have this PC hooked up to an ethernet jack through your router, we're gonna need Wi-Fi. And that's where this Wi-Fi card here from Asus, which I also got from Micro Center, is gonna come into play. And this will install just like a graphics card. There you go, looking a little cute. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this screw here where the PCI bracket is. This is gonna open up a little latch. We're gonna want that first before we actually put in the graphics cards. But actually before I even do that, let's go ahead and remove the PCI slots that are gonna be going where the graphics card and Wi-Fi card are gonna be going. All right, so I've removed three PCI slots. For two, they're gonna be occupied by the card and the last one that's gonna be occupied by the Wi-Fi card. And now let's actually go ahead and install the graphics card. Before we install our graphics card, let's go ahead and put in our PCI Wi-Fi adapter here on the bottom most slot of the PC case. Even though this is a small connector, it will fit into the full PCI X16, X16 slot, my bad. And we'll keep that in place for now. Now let's install our RX 6600, which make sure to remove this guy from the PCI slot on the card. Install this on the topmost slot. There you go. It's lined up with the topmost PCI slot. It's almost ready to go in and give it a firm press and it should click in like that. And while you're here, go ahead and plug in your PCIe power connector that you had on hand from inside the PC case into the graphics card with the eight pin connector. And there you have it. But don't forget to actually screw in your graphics card and PCI Wi-Fi adapter into the PC case. Reuse the same screws that you use to unscrew the PCI power slots, PCI slots in the case. There you go, graphics card is in. Let's go ahead and screw in the PCI Wi-Fi adapter. All right, I've got everything screwed in now. Gonna press back in this bracket and retighten this screw. And there you have it. All right, you are done building your computer and now let's go ahead and set it up, install Windows and get our graphics card drivers. So before you do any of that, make sure of course that you have a monitor on hand, power it up with a power cable and make sure to hook up a display cable from the monitor to the back of the graphics card. Not to where the motherboard is, back to where the graphics card is. And then of course a keyboard and mouse and then your Windows bootable media device, which you're going to see how to create one of these 
I have a tutorial linked in the description below for how to get a Windows 10 or 11 bootable media device onto one of these. So we're gonna plug this in into our front USB 3.0 header. It doesn't matter where you plug it in. And then the last thing you're gonna do is flick the switch on the back of the power supply from the O to the line, press the power button, and wait. All right, so some explanation is needed for what just happened. So I went ahead and booted up that computer and I didn't get a post. And that was a little bit weird because everything had gone really smoothly up until that point. But the issue was a faulty motherboard. So this is the old motherboard, our B450M DS3HV2. And honestly, there's nothing wrong about it, but this was an open box deal from Micro Center and it just happened to not work on us. So fortunately, Micro Center did send us a replacement, which is pretty much this exact same motherboard, but with Wi-Fi built in, so we won't need that Wi-Fi card. So with that motherboard replacement out of the way, now let me go ahead and show you how to install Windows. Okay, and if you've made it to this point, you should see the Windows 10 installation screen. Let's go ahead and click install now. So here you can go ahead and enter in your product key for Windows 10, Home or Pro, it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the Windows 10 Pro key that I got from VIP SCD key for 17 bucks using my discount code VIP scatter. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter this in letter by letter. All right, there's my product key, gonna hit next. And there we go, it took a little bit, but that went through. I'm gonna click I accept license and terms, custom install, there is our 500 gigabyte Samsung M.2 SSD, hit next, and there we have it. So with Windows installed, let's go ahead and set up Windows now. Hit yes, choose your country, don't need that. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna click on I don't have internet. That's just the simplest way to set up Windows. Continue with limited setup. I'm gonna say user, user, doesn't matter. It can be whatever, whatever. My childhood nickname was user. The name of the city my parents met was also called user. It's all right, it doesn't matter what you choose. This though, I would go ahead and turn off all of these features because they are just additional processes running in the background that you don't need for your Windows experience as a gamer. Not now, and there you have it. All right, you've made it to the Windows 10 home screen and if you have your Wi-Fi card, USB Wi-Fi adapter or any of these, go ahead and make sure that is plugged in on your computer so you can have access to the internet or if you have a router plug in your ethernet jack from your computer to your router okay so the one thing we do need to get to gaming on this computer are graphics card drivers so to find that we're gonna go ahead and type in AMD graphics card drivers into our search engine here's the big AMD drivers and support page we need to click on there we have it we could use this auto detect tool but we already know the graphics card we're using in this system which is a 6600 right there hit submit and we are using Windows 10 on this computer. So let's go ahead and click on that. Click on the latest release and let's go ahead and let that install. Hit yes, hit install. All right, there's our Radeon RX 6600. Click on install and now we just have to wait. And with that, we are almost done. Let's go ahead and restart our computer, but there is one more thing I want you to do in the BIOS. And in order to access the BIOS on this computer, go ahead and spam the delete key on your keyboard or the F2 key, which we'll do once this computer restarts. Okay, we've made it to the BIOS, and the last thing I want you to do is go ahead and go into easy mode. And right here on your left, there should be a DRAM status, some sort of feature that'll let you enable XMP. So now we went from XMP disabled to XMP profile one. This will let us run our RAM at its full advertised speed so we can get the most gaming performance possible. And that is the last thing I want you to do here in the BIOS. Let's go ahead and click yes for saving and exiting. And with that, you are ready to game. Have at it. Here is your annual Valorant FPS test, yet again at the shooting range. Oh! What? It's connecting, bro. Come on. What? My big guy run there. Got one, two, two, two. Okay, thanks for the assist. Nope. 
Oh! Okay. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm not even aiming right now. All right, here are my graphical settings. I'm running 1440p. Got it set to TAA, epic distance. Everything else though is pretty much on low though and on DirectX 12. This is like knockoff Call of Duty Zombies for Fortnite. That's way too... This is not sustainable. This is not sustainable. I can slide this open. Okay. Uh, that's not gonna be helpful though. Oh, I can slide it shut though. I think I can maybe get them from around the other side though. Oh, nope. That's Fortnite for you. This is a 700 PC running games at 1440p. The mark used to be 1080p, but now it's 1440p. AI or no match though. You know what? No, 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 no. I gotta increase the AI difficulty. No, no. All right, all right, all right. Difficulty, we're going pro. All right, hanging it around the outside. Keep the rear end in check, power. The AI are just gonna stop for some reason right at this checkpoint right here. No contact, all good. Deep breaking zone coming up. We're gonna send it. Gonna see if I get a little bit of a slip streak from this guy. Oh, <laughs> I hate the auto racing lines sometimes. It'll tell you to break when you can clearly go flat. And like that, we're gonna win this race on pro. Forza Horizon 5 needs to amp up its difficulty in some instances. And there's no checkpoint there to check for boundaries. This is a terrible map. Oh my God, I'm sorry guys. The freight rate's great though. Okay, so up until this point, I've shown you many popular first person shooters and other games like that that are easy to run. But let me show you something that's a little more challenging to run. Why not Cyberpunk 2077 at high settings at 1440p? Getting a, a pretty modest 60 frames per second. Unless you do dumb stuff like that. You know, if you want it though, you can go to settings and you could turn on Fidelity FX to get some extra FPS, which we'll go ahead and put that down to balance. See how that changes stuff. Dip it below 60. Let's see if we can do anything about that. If you went down to 1080 though, this would be very much playable. Just out of curiosity though, what if I put that to performance? What's the FPS looking like now? Okay, it doesn't look as good. Going through the city though, oh, we're just touching 60, not quite there. Yeah, I can't wait for FSR 2.0 to be implemented because that's gonna be such a game changer for this graphics card if you wanna run Cyberpunk. You can either get anywhere from 50 to 70 frames per second. So though, I think it's pretty impressive for a $700 PC nonetheless to run this game at 1440p at high setting. So it's got a little bit of an assist with fidelity effects. But again, I can't wait for FSR 2.0 to come out. Okay, don't judge me. I know I haven't played a single lick of Grand Theft Auto V single player mode. Here are my graphic settings, 1440p, MSAA set to 4X, and everything else is pretty much set to very high. I'll let you guys be the judge of the performance. I have done this sequence so many times. It is, <laughs> I'm only doing this for demonstration purposes. Yeah, again, what, 70 frames per second right now going through the city. I mean, honestly, if you bump this out in 1080p, you're getting easy over 100. But at 1440p, this ain't that bad. Oh yeah, you know what? The frame rate hasn't dipped below 60 from what I can tell. So here's one more game I wanna show you guys, that being on Elden Ring. This game runs actually pretty well on this computer, even at 1440p. Just to show proof, 1440p, maximum settings. There you have it. We're getting locked at 60 frames per second. It's actually, I think to get over 60, you have to do some stuff in the game files, but I'm too lazy to do that. I. I literally devout all my time to Forza Horizon 5. All right, whatever, I'll touch grace. Here we go, this should be good. Maximum settings, by the way, 1440p. Pretty confident you'll get 60 locked at high settings. Overall though, this computer, it can run today's games, whether that be free to play or triple A at 1440p at above 60 frames per second, pretty reliably. The goal is to get killed as quick as possible. I, I'm just done, <laughs> I'm done benchmarking for tonight. Check out that FPS meter though on the top left. This is at 1440p. Here's my graphical settings. Let's see, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Quality, and there you have it. All right, time to survive. Oh! There we go, <laughs> there we go. I gotta get out of here. Let me drop. Okay. Oh, oh my word, look at that. Come on, come down. This is terrible, guys. Oh yes. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna deny this guy the satisfaction of killing me. We're just gonna quit the game. And there you have it. This is probably one of the best $700 gaming PCs you can build in the year 2022.
but as of publishing this video, I wonder if maybe you can get a slightly better computer with the Ryzen 5 5500 with a B550 motherboard since those have gone down in price. But once again, one of the strengths of this computer in terms of value is that you can go with that Ryzen 4500, which is a fourth gen processor and can work with B450 motherboards right out of the box. Which speaking of, yes, there was that one hiccup with the motherboard, but that was less of a compatibility issue and more of just the motherboard probably didn't work on arrival. So the B450DS3H Wi-Fi motherboard that we got did the job, took care of it. And yeah, the motherboard swap wasn't that bad. So other than that motherboard mishap, this entire build I think is really solid. The 4500 being one of the cheapest six core 12 threaded CPUs you can get in addition with the RX 6600 is already gonna be a really good combo on paper and combined with the aesthetics and cleanliness of this build with the really cool Li and Li 205M that you can only get through Micro Center, just makes it a really nice, well-rounded $700 computer. And once again, on those benchmarks, I didn't intend to run those games at 1440p. I just forgot to change the resolution, but I went with it. And it even ran Cyberpunk 2077 at high settings at about 60 frames per second. And Elden Ring as well, at close to maxed out graphical settings, getting around 60 frames per second as well. So this computer packs a lot of punch and a lot of value, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So once again, huge thank you to Micro Center for sending all the parts over for this build and for letting me put another really cool PC build guide on this channel. And once again, all of their links will be in the description below if you wanna check out any of the parts that I used to make this PC build possible. And with that, that is all I have to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and this is the Scannable Channel, signing out.